Debt can crush a person, it can also crush a household, and it will certainly crush a government. And this is what is happening right now all around the world. It is particularly evident in the US with massive amounts of debt, with unfunded liabilities in the trillions upon trillions of dollars that can simply never be paid back. But even if we go with the on balance sheet statistics, we see that it is is an impossible feat to imagine. Let's get into the four ways the government can get out of debt. And I assure you, this is not going to look pretty. This right here is a very interesting chart to look at. And this basically shows all the Federal Reserves, their, their different sayings and how the public hangs on to every single word that they have said. I've mentioned this many times before, showed you the quotes, but now let's go into a chart that actually compares their quotes to what happens in the stock market. I'll just briefly read through them. The first one, Bullard, we should be willing to remove some accommodation right there he's saying we're going to stop printing some money and at that point it begins to decline right away and it goes down significantly until uh, William said more QE may be needed and we even at that point get a little bit of a drop Yellen comes in and says confident in expansion amid foreign fears and it stays about around the same there a logical this is Bullard saying a logical response is to delay the end of QE and a nice rise right there and it goes on and on what we're seeing is that the Federal Reserve is the most important factor for the rise of the stock market. It doesn't matter about P.E. ratios. It doesn't matter about the actual health of the economy. What matters is how much money that the Federal Reserve is willing to print. The same goes for in Europe. Actually, the Federal Reserve is more important than the ECB. If you want to know you're you're not in the US and you want to know what the most important factor is to, to, to determine what's going to happen in your country, and the most important thing is what the Federal Reserve is going to do. It's a joke. We have our own central banks in our own countries, yet the Federal Reserve is seen as almost a central bank for these central banks because they have bailed out so many of the financial institutions all around the world, and they shouldn't be doing this. But they found out this information just after the financial crisis that this was going on, and of course, this is a criminal act as far as I'm concerned. So let's go into that right now out of peak prosperity saying that there have been periods where they went with very high levels of government debt and these are the four traditional ways that they've been dealing with it number one is austerity you heard of austerity during what happened in europe and it's still going on today they basically put a stranglehold around the economy around the average citizen and that is basically supposed to have them grow now, austerity is good when the government is spending too much money on, let's say, bombing countries they have no business being in. You should impose the austerity on them, not the individual citizen, not closing off the so-called tax loopholes for the middle class. This is not the way you do this. It is not working if they think that austerity is a successful thing, look at what's happening in Europe. They impose the austerity measures and, of course, more unemployment and more poverty has resulted. And then we go on to the next one, defaulting on the government debts. You can see what happened in Argentina recently where they're uh, defaulting on their government debt. Now, why they're doing so is a different, uh, much different story, but... We've seen other governments around the world historically had to default on their debt. And they can certainly do this. However, I don't think that they will default in the traditional sense. They will not really have to admit their fault. They will rather print currency. And that brings into the third option, rapidly destroying the value of the currency. And when they can do this through an inflationary measures, they can just print and print and print. And they run that printing press up until the point where the dollars are completely worthless. And they'll 
shut them off. This has been going on all around the world. We saw it in Zimbabwe. We saw it in uh, Yugoslavia. We saw this going on in countless countries. And in many countries right now, it's going on to the point where they're heading in that direction where you have inflation rates of 50%. The currency will probably most, the most likely scenario if it gets to 50% inflation is that the currency will be destroyed if nothing else changes. And we go into the last one, which I have to scroll down for, financial repression and what they call uh, negative real interest rates. If they can keep the uh, inflation rates higher and the interest payments you're taking in, savers are losing purchasing power every year. And this is a huge problem because individuals, obviously, they would want to save their money. They want to make their currency in their nine to five jobs. They want to take it. They want to put it in the bank. Perhaps they want to put it in a mutual fund or a stock, but you can't do that because of the fact that money is losing value every single day. So they're chasing the more risky investments. And of course, in a financial crisis, it wipes out the average person, but the big guns like Warren Buffett are able to sustain that or they are able to sell beforehand. And they generally, like George Soros does often, they know before the market's crashing, they pull out their money and they buy the next asset. They're always uh, far ahead of the individual. And this is something that we've been seeing historically. Let's move on quickly, running out of time here. This chart here showing the S&P 500, that's the red line, and how essentially the federal funds rate and the other interest rates are basically declining at the same amount. You can see how they basically try and chase them downward, try to get the federal uh, the S&P to continue to rise up, but it doesn't work. They increase the interest rates far too slowly this is you can see this historically i've uh, you know gone into this myself looking at hundreds of years back and they always do the same thing how they increase the interest rates far too slowly allowing this to boom allowing a bubble to appear and then they bring them down after it's far too late this is something that happens over and over and over again if you haven't looked into this for yourself i suggest doing so already see it uh, historically going back very far now this is an issue that i have and a lot of the mainstream media does not talk about this and basically what i wanted to say is that this is just one article but I'll, I'll uh, reference with others real-time payment uh, payment system crash delays the house purchases and basically this is the Bank of England's governor but what I wanted to say is that this is happening all over the world where trading stock trading platforms and all sorts of other different uh, platforms electronic platforms are failing and this is actually halting millions of dollars worth of trades that are supposed to be taking place but cannot because of the system itself now this is very frightening because if individuals have their money they want to get it out what if this delay wasn't just for a minute or a second as happens occasionally what if it's for three days what if it's for five days or a month or, or a year? What would happen to the economy? What would happen to the individual if they can't get their money out of the bank because they have all their money in the banking system and they figure I'll just use my bank card whenever I need it? Or other things that could happen. Look at the bail-in strategies that they've been talking about that I will get into more. Uh, I have much more information on that, by the way, more to come. But essentially, this seems a lot like capital control, something I talked about in my book. This is uh, what I wrote about. In 1971, President Nixon started imposing wage and price controls. This is similar to what was done during the Great Depression, where wages of individuals were maintained regardless of the fact that they were not justified. As previously stated, this causes distortions in the economy. You cannot set the price of anything. The free market should determine the price. That's what the Federal Reserve is doing by pumping up the stock market they are creating a fraudulent market they are not allowing it to come down it is okay for the stock market to come down because the good money will fly in and it will pump the stock market back up you do not need to print money in order to do this 
This is actually really distorting the economy. As if you look at 1920, they did not intervene, and the stock market came up after a depression in just over one year. That is very successful, and all because they did not intervene. But price controls or wage controls are all what happens when the government intervenes in the system and makes things worse. They could do the same thing with the banking system, and they have done this in other countries and other places around the world. They've done a bank holidays in the U.S. itself. This is what you have to worry about. Let's get into this. This is real. This is what happened out of the voice of Russia, but I'm quoting here from it, something that actually happened. J.P. Morgan Chase basically gave out these letters to a bunch of their clients saying that they're going to have a little issue with their account. So I'll read the highlighted portion. Chase Bank has moved to limit cash withdrawals while banning business customers from sending international wire transfers, causing speculation that the bank is preparing for looming financial crisis in the United States by imposing capital controls. Number one, individuals will say that this can never happen. This is not happening. And of course, they will do damage control and Chase Bank will come out and say that this never happened. This is just a limited instance so on and so forth but number one they have done this before in the past they have imposed wage controls they have imposed price controls in the u.s this has been done before they have called the bank holiday before they have nationalized or some say confiscated the gold they can do these things they've done them before we have the history we have the track record why do we need to expect that this will not happen before and of course this is what they do every time. Now I have to move on right here. This is another one saying out of Chase again, we will no longer allow wire transfers from business savings accounts. They are suggesting again, they're suggesting that they are not going to uh, allow this to happen after you know this uh, specific date. Regardless, even if they do do this or they do not, they're setting the precedence by doing this and they also are basically allowing this to happen the next time. When there's another financial crisis, they can then impose these things. And this becomes a big problem for individuals because they have to then take their money out of the banking system. But if it's locked down, they're not going to be able to get at it. And that is very, very dangerous for civil unrest, for riots. This is yet another uh, letter here out of Chase again saying you will no longer be able to send international wire transfers and then they limit the cash activity for these accounts to fifty thousand dollars per statement cycle and this is how they start they start at the very high amount and then they will go down and pretty soon you're not allowed to get your money out they did it in cyprus just recently where they called the bank holiday and then after the bank opened while the currency was being devalued rapidly they only allowed people to get a portion of their money out this is very frightening should be frightening to everybody and essentially what i wanted to get to is that you need to have your money your your wealth, I should say, in a place that is very stable, that has a sound footing, that has not had the track record where they lock you out of it. This is a huge problem that is not being talked about in the mainstream media and will not be talked about. So we need to discuss it here. We need to have that open forum and really discuss where is the safest place to put my wealth so that I can have it, so that I can really send it on from generation to generation. I would just mention briefly because I always get asked these questions where do I put my money? What I suggest that uh, what I would do, let's say, in this situation is to have your money in real assets. That's the most important thing. And very simply, you can have it in gold and silver and uh, what they call common or junk silver. You can have it in real estate. You can have it in uh, other types of property. Why not? Why think so big of uh, if you can't afford a house? Why not a parking spot? Why not a storage locker? And you need to invest in other things. What I determine as the money GPS strategy, something that I bring up very often i talked about on the insiders if you're not on there already please get on there there are now over 1,000 people on the insiders by the way just wanted to throw that in and essentially what you need to do is get 
into a mode where you don't think of either stocks or bonds or paper assets or real estate. Get into a, a mode where you actually remove yourself from the financial system altogether. So very simply, you can have uh, solar panels. Why pay electricity prices when you could take the money that was in your retirement account, you could put it into your solar panels, never paying electricity uh, ever again. You can grow a garden and have that to basically uh, grow, that, grow that garden and have it, uh, you know, you basically reduce the cost you would pay on food. You can grow sprouts in your own house for cheap. If you're living in an apartment building, for example, there are many strategies here that you can use to lessen your dependence on the financial system, on the economic system that we know is doomed. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. It's very important to me. It helps me out a lot and signals to the other YouTubers out there that this is a great video and don't forget to become an insider the insiders is where I give out all my best Intel for free and now we have over a thousand people on there thank you to all the new subscribers I want to say hello to you please don't be afraid to email me I get emails every single day and I wish that more people would continue on with that if you want to be on there scroll down uh, go to the moneygps.com scroll down to the bottom fill in your email address and you will get occasional emails from me with good short concise info